Now we come to the muscles of the cruise or the muscles of the leg. Uh, for your orientation, this is the patella, this is the patellar ligament. Uh, we're going to start with the muscle on the craniolateral aspect, and then we're going to go to the muscles on the medial caudal aspect of, of the cross. Okay, This is the stifle joint here. Now, the first muscle we're going to dissect is the cranial tibial. And this is the cranial tibial, as the name implies, okay, as the name implies, it is the muscle that's sitting on the cranial surface of, of the tibia. It is this wide muscles, okay? It originates from the proximal part of the tibia, and it inserts on the plantar aspect of the first and second metatarsal. This is the tendon of the cranial tibial. This is the cranial tibial muscle here, originating from the proximal aspect of the tibia. The tendon will go and run under the crural extensor retinaculum, which is this structure here. This is a modified deep fascia. We call it retinaculum. It will hold the tendon of the cranial tibial in place. The tendon of the cranial tibial then pass and go to the plantar aspect of the first and the second uh, metatarsal bones. Now, the cranial tibial, if you remember, the flexion angle of the tarsal joint is this angle here in the front of the joint. Every time this angle gets smaller, it is flexion. Every time this angle gets larger, it's extension. So the cranial tibial muscles, because of its location, it will flex the tarsal joint, and also it will rotate the pole laterally, okay, because of its attachment to the plantar aspect of the first and the second metatarsal. When we go to the next one, which is this muscle here, this is the long digital extensor. Okay. This is the long digital extensor. Okay. Now, the long digital extensor, its tendon also passes through the crural extensor retinaculum, which is this structure here. I hope you can see it good. Okay, this is a deep fascia, okay? This is the crural, which indicates the cross, extensor retinaculum. It is this structure here. I hope you can see it. Don't confuse the crural extensor retinaculum with the tarsal extensor retinaculum, which is this one here. We have one proximal to the tarsal joint, that is at the level of the cross, this is the crural extensor retinaculum. The one that at the level of the tarsal joint, this one here, this is the tarsal extensor retinaculum. Now, the long digital extensor, it has four tendons. Okay, so it will insert on the extensor processes of digit number two, three, four, and five. Remember, the cranial tibial doesn't extend to the level of the digit, so it has no action on the digital joint. Its action is confined to the tarsal joint where it flexes the tarsal joint and rotates the pole. Now, the long digital extensor, it flexes the tarsal joint and also it extends the digital joint. It has four tendons they will insert on digit number, the, the extensor processes of digit number one, two, um, three, uh, I mean two, three, four, and, and five. Now, when we go laterally, this short muscle here, this is the fibularis longus. And the fibularis longus originates from the lateral collateral ligament, which means it is coming from the femur, okay? And it will go 
and insert to the four tarsal bone. This is the fibularis longus. Okay, so its action is also confined to the tarsal joint. Uh, it has nothing to do with the digital joint. So the fibularis longus, it is coming from the lateral collateral ligament and it inserts on the fourth tarsal bone. So it's a flexor of the tarsal joint. Now, so out of these three muscles that we dissect, the cranial tibial, the long digital extensor, and the fibularis longus, only the long digital extensor act on the tarsal joint and also act on the digital joint. Now, when we go to the caudomedial muscles, okay, the first one we're going to deal, deal with is the gastrocnemius. And the gastrocnemius, it has two heads. Okay? It has a lateral head, and also it has a medial head. Okay? The gastrocnemius arises from the distal end of, of the femur. Okay? And its tendon is part of the common calcanean tendon with the biceps and the semi tendinosus and the gracilus and the superficial digital flexor, all of these muscles, they will come and form the common digital extensor which insert on the tuber calcane, okay, which is at this level here. Okay, so the gastrocnemius, it is coming from the distal end of the femur and it is attached to the tuber calcane. It has a lateral head and it has a medial head. These two heads enclose in between them the superficial digital flexor. And also the superficial digital flexor tendon will go and insert on the tuber calcane and it will extend all the way on the plantar aspect of the paw to go and insert on the second phalanx. So the gastrocnemius, lateral and medial head, both of them encloses, enclose the superficial digital flexor. Now, for the stifle joint and the tarsal joint, these two joints, they have to work in unison, which means every time the stifle joint is extended, the tarsal joint has to be extended, and vice versa. Every time the stifle joint is flexed, the tarsal joint needs to be flexed. If we look at the gastrocnemius, you're gonna realize based on its attachment, because it is coming from the distal aspect of the femur and insert on the tuber calcaneus. Now, when it contracts, it will flex the stifle joint and it will extend the tarsal joint. And there is no way this could happen. So we consider the action of the gastrocnemius is to support the stifle joint and also to support the tarsal joint. Bear that in mind. Now, we end with two other muscles. Those are the deep digital flexor. And to draw your attention to the fact that the deep digital flexor in the hind limb has only two heads, a lateral head and a medial head. Okay? Now, this muscle here, this is the lateral digital flexor, which is the fairest part of the deep digital flexor, opposite to the forelimb, where the deep digital flexor has three heads, humeral head, radial head, and ulnar head. On the hind limb, the deep digital flexor has only two heads. A lateral head, we call it lateral digital flexor, and the tendon of the deep digital flexor doesn't go through the tuber Calcane, it goes through this depression here on the talus bone, and the tendon will go all the way on the plantar aspect of the hind paw to go and insert on the distal phalanx, which is phalanx number, number three. If we want to see the medial digital flexor, we go to the medial side. Okay. This is the gastrocnemius. 
This is the superficial digital flexor. Okay. This part here represents the medial digital flexor, which is the other part of the deep digital flexor. Again, okay, the light went off. Okay, again, this muscle here. Okay, this is the medial digital flexor, which is the second part of the deep digital flexor. The muscle that you see at the top here, this is the popliteus muscle. Okay, this muscle here is the popliteus popliteus muscle. Okay, now. By this, we will cover all the muscles of the uh, cross or the leg. Thank you.